CNN 10, I'm Carl Azus. The issue of immigration is first up in today's Down the Middle coverage. Earlier this month, the Biden administration announced plans to eliminate an immigration rule called Title 42. It was put in place two years ago during the Trump administration as the COVID pandemic was taking hold in the United States. Title 42 is a public health policy. It was intended to keep migrants who might have been sick with coronavirus from entering America. And it did that by allowing the U.S. government to expel migrants, mostly by land to Mexico, though the U.S. has flown some back to their home countries in Central and South America and the Caribbean. The U.S. says there have been more than 1.7 million expulsions under Title 42 since it was put in place. Most of those occurred under the Biden administration, but it now says Title 42 is no longer necessary because COVID conditions have improved and the U.S. has more tools to fight the virus. So starting May 23rd, the government plans to eliminate the rule. That will make it easier for migrants to enter America if they're seeking asylum, if they say they've been discriminated against in their home countries. But it's expected to lead to a major increase in the number of people trying to cross the border into the U.S. And critics are concerned that could overwhelm America's ability to deal with them. Republicans say last year, more people entered the U.S. illegally than ever before. They say that problem will get worse without Title 42 in place. Some Democrats say the rule was illegal to begin with and that it unfairly kept asylum seekers out of America. But several other Democrats say before the Biden administration removes the rule, it needs to have a plan in place for a potential surge in immigration. And a bipartisan group of lawmakers is asking the government to delay its plans to remove Title 42. This park in downtown San Antonio has turned into a waiting area. How many days have you been in San Antonio? Seven days. For migrants who are exempt from Title 42, the pandemic order that allows immigration agents to swiftly return migrants to Mexico. The city mayor, a Democrat, recently sending a letter to the Biden administration sounding the alarm about the unsustainable increase of migrants. His administration warning that if Title 42 lifts, the city's ability to meet the humanitarian need could be limited. DHS estimates that thousands more migrants could arrive at the border. Would you be ready to serve that many more migrants? It's daunting. Katie Myers from Interfaith Welcome Coalition says that on average between 150 and 200 migrants arrive at this bus station every day. Many with cell phones, the migrants say, issued and geolocated by the U.S. government. He said, take a picture of yourself. Some migrants, confused about how to use the devices to check in with immigration officials using facial recognition technology, an alternative to detention rolled out by the Biden administration. Another 300 to 500 migrants being dropped off at the airport every day, says Myers. The latest spike, she says, started in mid-March. How many of you had money to buy a ticket to get to your destination? No, 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 no. And it came with a new challenge. Migrants are arriving with no plan and no money. The result? Sleeping at the park. About how many people have slept in the park? There might be, have been 20 or 25 men who... Per night, says Myers. That's why Pastor Gavin Rogers says he recently opened a shelter at Travis Park Church. You see mostly men here because women with children are placed in hotels, he says. They can shower, they can eat. Uh, they can receive the proper food and they can wait safely until they get through San Antonio. On average, between 50 and 150 migrants sleep here every night, says Rogers, a nonprofit filling in the gaps for the federal government. It falls onto nonprofits in municipalities that really are kind of indifferent to the local or national politics, but have to find a local solution. U.S. Congressman Henry Cuellar represents this area and he's bucking his party on Title 42, saying the Biden administration's intent to end the policy. Would be a mistake. So when you ask the White House for a plan, what do they say? Uh, well, they said they have a plan and I saw... Did they share the plan? They said we're going to notify the non-for-profits that more people are coming. That's not a plan. That's just a notification. They said we're going to bring some of the agents from the northern uh, border over here. That's only temporary. Most migrants stay in San Antonio a few nights. Jesse Amaya has been here 21 days. He says he's waiting for his wife, who is still in Mexico, waiting to cross. What's your biggest worry? Her physical safety. He says he plans to wait for her in San Antonio, the place they hope to call home. 10-second trivia. 
Which of these stars is believed to be the smallest? Aldebaran, the Sun, Sirius, or Betelgeuse? With a diameter of less than a million miles, our Sun, according to NASA, is an average sized star and the smallest on this list. Space weather is next. It's heavily influenced by the flares and ejections of the sun, which is estimated to be a 10,000 degree ball of helium and hydrogen in the middle of our solar system. NASA says it has a fleet of spacecraft that study the sun's activity, its environment, and how what happens on its surface can impact what happens in our atmosphere. Rachel Crane explains why our nearest star is so mysterious. The sun is uh, what gives us life and supports us, but it also poses dangers. Um, it is governed by um, a strong unknown hidden force, <laughs> the magnetic field. Despite shining down on the Earth for millennia, there's still a lot we don't know about the sun. One of the biggest questions scientists are investigating now is how our host star's magnetic field affects its regular cycle of activity. It's called the solar cycle. The solar cycle is the roughly 11-year period of fluctuating activity of the sun's magnetic field. And over those 11 years, the sun's poles completely flip, meaning the north pole becomes the south, and the south the north. This cycle can be visibly measured by an increase and decrease of sunspots on its surface. The least sunspots in an 11-year period is considered solar minimum, while the most sunspots signifies the solar maximum. No two solar cycles are the same, and often vary in activity. What are sunspots, and why are they dark? Sunspots appear as dark spots on the solar surface because they're cooler than the rest of the sun, at 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooler doesn't sound like more active, right? That's actually a pocket of very, very intense magnetic field. The reason the temperature goes down is because the magnetic fields in those areas are so strong that they create a barrier, stopping heat from the sun from reaching the surface. Solar maximum also results in increased activity in the sun's atmosphere, known as the corona. That activity creates bright and active regions that are rooted in the sunspots below and are the origin of solar flares or coronal mass ejections. A super flare. Okay, so it's not like a Nick Cage disaster movie. But solar maximum can have consequences in space and on Earth. The sun impacts space weather, which can disrupt satellites, GPS, and telecommunication systems. And it can endanger our infrastructure too, including the power grid. Plus, radiation from the sun can be dangerous for astronauts working outside the ISS. If we could better predict the timing and intensity of the solar cycle, more measures could be taken to protect from the sun. <laughs> but increased solar activity can also create splendor for us here on the pale blue dot. Particles ejected from the sun interact with the gases in our atmosphere. That intermingling results in the northern and southern lights, a beautiful display of colors close to the Earth's poles. So what causes the solar cycle? Well, we still don't know. But NASA and the European Space Agency are on the case, sending probes closer than ever and from new angles in hopes of filling in as many questions about the sun as they can. Scientists at MIT have been studying cookies? A researcher in mechanical engineering there says when she was little, she got frustrated trying to evenly separate an Oreo so that both sides had the same amount of cookie and cream. A lot of times, one side gets all the cream, the other side gets none. So her team built an Oreometer, a device that used a precise amount of force to try to split the cookie evenly. It could not. Seems there are just too many factors at play, including adhesion in the cream itself, to perfectly divide an Oreo. But at least their work was filling, if not fulfilling. Ori overall tasty, if Ori under all performing. A plan which took a sandwich out of hands which had a twist. It satisfies a hunger for sugar, if not for answers, proving they're not all black and white. I guess it just depends on which way the cookie crumbles. Burke High School gets today's shout out. It is great to see you watching from Omaha, Nebraska. YouTube.com slash CNN10 is the one and only place to request a shout out. I'll call a wolf. Thank you.